This is a follow-up video to a solution that I posted already to the Veritasium question involving the uh, average speed going around a track. If, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, see the description below. Uh, check out the Veritasium uh, video first and then have a look at my first solution before you look at this solution. I'll, I'll, I'll put a, a link to it somewhere here uh, so you can find that more easily. In any case, in my first solution, I basically showed how the question as posed was impossible. Uh, you couldn't do it. I showed conceptually that there just wasn't time to do it. Uh, I showed mathematically that it's like impossible, divide by zero, it, math kind of explodes in your face. No way, no how can you do this. So this alternate solution will be a little bit different. Uh, I'll show that uh, actually you could reinterpret the question so as to go from having no solution to having as many solutions as you like, um, literally infinitely many solutions, and it is totally possible. But it does require a slight change to how we interpret the question. Um, a shout out to a uh, commenter from the original solution video that I posted, Macy, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who uh, in the comments to that uh, solution that I posted kind of raised the question of, uh, well, what if, what if the second lap was a little bit longer? Uh, couldn't you then have the, the average speed work out the way you wanted to? And my first reaction to that was, well, I guess, but you can't do that. I mean, the, the second lap has to be the same as the first lap. I mean, it's the same distance for sure. Certainly that was uh, my, my interpretation of the question. I mean, you, you run one lap around the track. The second lap, I made the assumption, is the same distance. I think that that was probably the spirit of the original question. Uh, we, we do this in physics. We tend to assume the simplest situation. If, uh, if there's a change to a, a different lap somehow, uh, we usually assume that that's going to be given in the question itself. Being more of a riddle kind of question here, maybe we are justified in being a little bit more open-ended in our interpretation. So in any case, uh, I'll, I'll show kind of mathematically and, and some examples uh, with, with uh, interactive physics again to show what I mean here. You, you can have a solution to this question with a slight change here. But before I show that, just a quick comment here. There, there still seem to be a lot of people struggling with the idea that you cannot generally find an average speed by taking, say, the two speed values, I'll, I'll assume that that is still the case, uh, taking the two speed values, adding them up and dividing by two. Um, it, it just seems like it should work somehow uh, to most people. Uh, and, and I agree, it, it, it is kind of intuitive, but that's, that's the fun thing about physics. It, it doesn't always work according to your intuition. Uh, and when it doesn't work according to your intuition, that's, in my opinion, that's, that's the best part. Uh, that's when you actually learn something. You say, whoa, I didn't see it that way before. So hopefully that'll happen for you if, if it hasn't happened already with, with this topic. Um, just to make the point clear, let's look at a, a quick scenario here to, to make this clear. Uh, suppose that you're, you're running along, and let's say that you're running at a, at a pretty good uh, pace here, let's say five meters per second. Uh, let's say that you've got better endurance than I do, uh, and you're moving at five meters per second, nice and steady, running along here. Uh, like I said, much better <laughs> endurance than I do. Let's say you can, you can do that for like, I don't know, 10 hours straight. Uh, this is some kind of a super marathon or something. You're running and running and running and running 10 meters per second without, uh, sorry, uh, Five meters per second is the value I gave. Uh, five meters per second, nice and steady for a long, 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 long time. At the end of your run, you decide to have a bit of a cool down. You walk, let's say, at one meter per second, but you only do for like two minutes. Two minutes of walking after 10 hours of running. Now, according to what I described here, your motion only had two parts to it. Uh, a running part, which was at five meters per second, and a walking part of one meter per second. Now, if I were to ask what was the average speed that you were moving at for that entire motion, which would have been, I guess, just a little bit over 10 hours, uh, I'm hoping that your intuition is, is, is going to agree with me on this. Um, the answer is definitely not going to be found by adding up those values and dividing by 2. It wouldn't be reasonable to say that you averaged 5 plus 1 is 6, divide by 2 is 3. You averaged 3 meters per second. If you were running at 5 meters per second for a very, very, very long time, uh, that is going to have a very big impact on the average speed. It's going to pull the average speed towards that value. I'd have to work out the exact value, but if you really did that motion that I just described, your average would be just a touch under 5 meters per second. Uh, and that's why we do have to look at the whole motion. We have to look at the distance that you traveled in all and divide that by the time that it took you in all. That's how we find average speed. It's uh, kind of sort of like a, like a weighted average. It takes into account how long that you held on to these, uh, these two different speed values. Now, in the original interpretation of my question where the two laps were assumed to be the same distance, note that if you traveled those at different speeds, you would definitely not have had them for the same time. 
it might sound like there's a symmetry there, two laps of the same distance. Uh, sh you know, the average should be pulled equally by the two values, but that's not true uh, because it really is about timing. So uh, that's, that's why you can't look at the average as just add them up, divide by two. Uh, you'd be more heavily influenced by your slower speed in that case because you would have had it for a longer time. Anyway, onto my alternate solution. I'm going to show you how it's possible if, if we allow the laps to be of different length. All right, here we are back in interactive physics. Uh, and this is essentially the same simulation that I had shown in my first solution with, with one important difference. Um, I basically had kind of an end point at this eight meter mark here that nothing was allowed to move past that point. Uh, as you can see, I've removed that. So here's how this is going to work. This object is going to move at one meter per second steady the whole time. The, uh, the blue object is going to go two meters per second steady the whole time. Green is going to transition from one as soon as it finishes what I'm still thinking of as the first lap uh, reaching this line. It will transition to be all of a sudden going three meters per second. Uh, the orange block will do essentially the same thing, but transition into a speed of four meters per second. By the way, notice how the front edges of all these objects line up with the position zero. And I am going to refer to the front edge as kind of like the point that I'm measuring from. So visualize this as the starting line. Uh, this represents four meters, which was the, the first lap. Uh, the second lap originally was interpreted to be the same length. Uh, let me just play this out and show you what happens. All right, so red is going steady, blue is going steady, uh, green and orange make a instantaneous transition three meters per second, four meters per second. I'm just going to let this play out a little bit longer, uh, in fact, for 10 seconds, so right there. Okay, so we're 10 seconds into this motion, and we can actually see their speeds right now. Th this one is going at one meter per second still. This one is still going at two. Uh, this one has, uh, it's in its latter part here, so it, it's locked into three, and this one's locked into four meters per second. But here's an important question. This arrangement represents where the objects are 10 seconds into this movement. Suppose that we ask a very different question right now. Let's not ask what their speed value is right now. Let's rather ask what their average speed has been over the 10 seconds explored so far. So for the 10 seconds of motion seen, what is the average speed of these objects? Well, for average speeds, I don't really need to know how they got there. I don't need to know any details. All I need to know is how far did it go and how long did it take? So this red object is uh, right now lined up at the 10 meter mark. So even if I didn't know how it got there exactly, I can confidently say, well, it moved 10 meters. It took 10 seconds. So this object has averaged one meter per second. Now that should make sense because I mean it never even changed. It was going one meter per second the whole time. So sure, its average is also one meter per second. Same thing for the blue object. Uh, it's at the 20 meter mark, so it has certainly averaged 20 meters in 10 seconds is two meters per second. Yep, the average speed matches the speed at this moment because its speed never changed. The other two, slightly different story. The green object right at this moment in time is at the 22 meter mark. Now, I do know that it got there in 10 seconds, so I can say, look, I don't need to know details. I don't care what happened in between, fast or slower, maybe even took a break somewhere. It doesn't matter. I can tell you that it moved a total of 22 meters in 10 seconds, and therefore, to this moment in time, the motion so far, it has an average speed of exactly, well, 22 over 10, so 2.2 meters per second. Yep, this green object has averaged 2.2 meters per second. Meanwhile, the orange object has traveled 28 meters, so it has averaged 2.8 meters per second in the 10 seconds seen so far. So that's basically what's going on at the 10 second mark of time. Now, let me reset this and run it again. This time, I want to take particular note of what happens four seconds into the simulation. So let me actually come in here. I'm going to just set a, uh, a pause control just so to make this uh, nice and exact here. Uh, I'll put in a pause control at, at four seconds. And while I'm at it, uh, I'm going to say another time uh, of six seconds is noteworthy. So six seconds. And another condition of time of eight seconds. Two, f yeah, four, six, eight, yeah, this should be it. 
All right, so this way I don't have to worry about hitting stop at the, at the critical moment here. So I'm going to just press run, and the program will automatically stop itself at those predetermined times. So here we go. It's, uh, it's two seconds in. Uh, it is now four seconds in. Okay, so here's what I can tell you. Four seconds into this motion, this object has averaged, surprise, surprise, uh, two meters per second because it traveled eight meters in four seconds. This one, this one, and this one, all three of those have traveled four meters in four seconds, so they've averaged one meter per second. Okay, but let's go to that next time that I programmed in here, the six second moment. Okay, so just kind of continue this along here. Uh, here we are six seconds in. This is an interesting moment in time. Even though the movement can continue into a different arrangement after this, here's what I can actually say. For the first six seconds of motion, we do have something interesting. The blue object and the orange object have traveled the exact same distance of 12 meters. Uh, they've taken exactly six seconds to get there. Therefore, they have both averaged two meters per second. And in a way, that's kind of what the riddle was suggesting. We were looking for somehow getting an object to average twice its original speed. Well, the average speed of this orange block right now is two meters per second, which is twice the starting speed of one meter per second. So in a way, you could think of that as a success. But it's not the only possible success. I'll continue to the eight second moment, where we can say pretty much the same thing for the green object. By the way, we can no longer say it for the orange object. This object has no longer had, not over the eight seconds explored, it does not any longer have an average speed of two meters per second. Its average speed has picked up because it's had a greater duration of time now at its higher speed. So the average is being swayed closer and closer to that four. But the green object at this moment has traveled 16 meters in eight seconds, and that is an average speed of, surprise, two meters per second. So yeah, this object also has, at this moment in time, kind of had that successful condition of having traveled the same average speed as this one, and therefore twice the starting speed. Yeah, it started at one meter per second. It has averaged two meters per second. So here's how I'm thinking of it. If four meters was the length of the first lap, and if the second lap was eight meters long, so basically from this line all the way to this line, so eight meters, so kind of like ignore this, if you will. In fact, let me just get rid of it so it doesn't kind of stand in the way. Um, if the, or actually, hang on, I think that was the, yeah, 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 because this is the first lap from here to here, four meters. If this is the second lap, eight meters long, then we can actually say for this movement, we do have kind of a success of sorts. Uh, the object that had a transition to, I'll let it continue, a transi uh, transition rather to four meters per second ties this one, and so it does have an average speed of two. And uh, again, if we reinterpret it, if I reset it, get rid of this one. Uh, there, did I get, oh yeah, there we go. So now the first lap is four meters, and the second lap is actually 12 meters from the, uh, the 16 to the four. Uh, for this whole motion here, we can say essentially the same thing for, wait for it, I'll just continue. We can say essentially the same thing for the green object right here. So eight seconds in, the green and the blue have averaged two meters per second. So, uh, so it does kind of work. But if you're still confused by this, let me show you mathematically, because yet again, mathematics is something that we should go back to. Seeing it conceptually is, is hopefully nice, but uh, you know, the, the, the physics really needs to be pinned down with the, uh, the, the, the essential math here. So let me switch over to that. All right, so hopefully seeing the conceptual visualization with uh, interactive physics helped see things, but let's turn attention to the math itself because this is really the proof, if you will. Now, a quick warning, the math here is gonna be a fair bit more involved than my original solution because we're gonna have an extra variable now. The, the, the two paths, the two laps rather, are not gonna be treated as being the same distance anymore. So I'll have to keep track of them separately. Now, for those of you who are kind of into this thing, you know, math and physics is, is right up your alley, the math probably is gonna make perfect sense to you. The, the, the algebra should be sensible. Uh, for those of you who math is, is maybe not your thing, you're, you're less recently you know, confident and familiar with the algebra, hang in there because really, even if it doesn't make sense to you line by line, uh, the end result is still something that should be able to be made sense of. Plus, when I get to the end of this, I'll actually show a numerical example using the math that actually should bring it all together. So even if you need to just kind of trust me on the math a little bit here, stay tuned, we'll, uh, we'll reconvene here at the end of it. So here we go. 
Uh, starting with the same thing I did before, the, the first lap is going to have a time that is necessarily calculated as D1 over V1. We're assuming constant speed for each of the two laps and ignoring any transition between them. Still a simplification. The uh, second lap is going to take its own time that will be calculated the same way, D2 over V2, but again notice D1 and D2, the two laps not being the same anymore. And uh, I can still say the same thing about the overall average for both laps. I'll call that V average, the line on top signifying exactly that. The V average is the total distance traveled divided by the total time taken. All right, now let's play around with the math. Uh, what I've done here is I've multiplied, uh, or actually I take it back, I've substituted in the average speed we are, we are told, the, the whole point of the question really is that the average speed is to be equal to twice V1. So this is really just a, a quick substitution. The average speed is twice V1. All right, now, playing around with the algebra, I can throw this T1 plus T2 to the other side by multiplying it across. So there it is, 2V1 multiplied by that uh, is gonna be equal to D1 plus D2. I can substitute in, I know that the time is calculated as mentioned above, D over V for each of the two times, equal to the same. And uh, I'm stop using my colors here because it really just becomes pure math at this point. Uh, what I can do is I can ultimately solve for a variable that I'm really interested in right now. Uh, now the variable that I chose to, uh, to calculate for starters at least is uh, I believe D2. I, I think that's what I've solved for. I've already lost track, but uh, we'll follow it and see. Uh, so uh, yeah, so basically I solved for D2 to be equal to D1 plus 2V1 D2 over V2. Uh, which I then kind of worked a little bit backwards to solve for, and I'll just kind of gloss over all the math, all the math, all the math. Uh, feel free to hit pause at any point and have a close look at what I've done. Uh, but I end up with something that looks like this. The second path, the, the second lap, could have a distance d2, which would have a length that depends on d1. It would also depend on the speed that you started with and therefore the speed that you end with. Uh, in accord with this relationship. Now, I can actually rearrange this equation. I didn't show the math in doing so. I could actually solve that for a different variable. Uh, I chose to solve it for V1. So trust me on the math. Uh, according to the premise of the question, we could have the two paths of different length, D1, D2. And if, this is, this is the important part, if V1, the speed of your first lap, is equal to this expression, so all of these other numbers are, are values that we'll assume that we know, then we would have exactly what we were looking for. We would have the average for the two laps be twice our starting speed. Now, the reason I chose to solve for V1 is because of the way the question was given. If you recall, uh, Derek in the original Veritasium video said, you can travel the first lap as slow as you want, uh, but then you had to pick it up for lap two. So how about if I give you a numeric solution in which I'm gonna kind of utilize that line of thinking. All right, so having generated that equation, let me show you what it means in a somewhat real world scenario. I'm imagining there being a circular track which has two lanes in it. The inner lane, which I've drawn in red, is a radius of 100 meters, uh, and there's a slightly larger adjacent lap, if you will, a, a, an adjacent track, which has a radius of 101 meters. So it's just, you know, like a one lane separated by the other lane by one meter. By the way, my drawing's not quite to scale, but it should illustrate the point pretty well. All right, so here's really what I'm thinking. Uh, you start at the starting point of the red lap, and then you run around following the red track. Round you go. That would be your first lap at some V1. You then jump over to the other lane. I'm gonna ignore that little motion, by the way, just a cheat to make it a little bit simpler. Uh, and then you run around the second lap. Now. The idea being that that second lap will be a higher speed, such that your average of both laps together is gonna to be twice what you're traveling in that first lap. Now again, I've already done the math, so I'm just going to apply it to this situation. I do need to choose a starting point though. So how about if I choose, uh, yeah, right there. I'm gonna choose a V2 of one meter per second. Now, I could have chosen a V1 and worked out a V2, but uh, you'll see it's actually a little bit easier to go this way if you wanna keep it within, uh, within certain limits of, of what is, quote, doable in the real world. So, I'm gonna choose our second speed to be one meter per second. I'm gonna calculate what speed I would have had to have had in my first lap, V1, so as to have the average work out the way we want it. All right, so 
uh, I can calculate the V1 using the equation that, that I just kind of showed you. Uh, I know all of the values on the right side of the equation, and that means that I can put the numbers in and solve. Doing so reveals a speed of 0 0.005 meters per second. Now, that's really slow. That's really slow. That's literally five millimeters per second. But again, remember the premise of the question. I can go as slow as I want to for the first lap in order to pick it up for the second lap to make it work out. So if I were to crawl, like we're talking unbelievably slowly, five millimeters per second, it's going to take a long, 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 long time, but eventually I do it. I then hop over to the other lane and I walk. I walk at a normal pace of one meter per second. I'll let you do the math if you want to in terms of the actual values, but I'm going to suggest to you that it actually works. Uh, your average speed of the two laps together will indeed be twice what you started at. In other words, it's going to average to 10 millimeters per second for the two laps combined. It actually works. It's possible. By the way, the reason I said there are infinitely many solutions well, again, these are just values that I chose. What if I had chosen a slightly larger radius for my second path? You know, instead of 101 meters, I, I choose 102 meters or, or 110 meters or whatever. Um, literally, what I have here is a relationship. If I back up to here, I have a relationship that relates these variables. So with some limits in place here, you, you, um, you are restricted to using certain values. If you go too far, um, if you have a D1 that is, quote, too big in relation to D2, you might get a negative uh, value popping this equation. I would say that that's a senseless answer. So there are some limits. Uh, nonetheless, I claim that there are infinitely many solutions that would work if you just choose certain variables and calculate the other variables that you would need. So there you go. Uh, if you can change your laps, you can do it.